Hello and welcome to Ionic Tips Weekly, uh, episode 6, uh, the weekly Ionic show where we take a look at one small tip each week to try and become better Ionic developers. Uh, for this week's tip, uh, I'm going to look at uh, mapping and filtering arrays. Uh, so mapping and filtering are two functions of arrays that we can use to uh, manipulate that array in some way. And it's really useful to be familiar with these because it's a great way to uh, work with the data you have and sort of get it in the format that you need uh, in a really sort of clean and simple way. Uh, so what I've done here is set up a little uh, example application. Uh, I've just got some uh, some vegetables defined in an array here. Uh, we've just got a, a title of the vegetable and the color of the vegetable. Uh, I've just done this just to have a little bit of uh, interesting data to work with rather than just uh, strings in an, uh, in an array. And I'm going to go through two, uh, two examples, one of uh, mapping that array and one of filtering. Uh, so the first example we're going to look at is filtering the array. And you can see here, uh, what we're doing is we are filtering out, we're filtering out the array for colors, uh, vegetables that are green, or rather we're getting rid of any vegetables that are not green. Uh, so this probably looks a, a little bit confusing uh, to look at. Uh, but basically what we're doing uh, with this array is we're calling that a filter function. Uh, so we uh, get a reference to the array, which is this dot vegetables, and then we just call filter. And what we do with this uh, function is that we pass it a filter function. And that's what this portion uh, of that is. So the parameter we're passing in is a filter function. And so what's happening with this filter function is that uh, it's kind of looping over every single element in the array. And on every single element in that array, we're running our function. And if we return true for that function, then it's going to keep that element in the array. Uh, and if we return false, it's going to get rid of it. Uh, so for this filter function, we're passing in the vegetable, which again, it just uh, gives us a reference to uh, each individual element that kind of loops through all of the elements. And then we return vegetable.color equals equals green. So that's going to return true if the uh, color property of each vegetable is green, and it's going to return false if it's not. So what that means is that, say when it runs for this element here, it's going to check uh, the color and it's going to test, uh, it's going to say return uh, vegetable vegetable.color, which is white, equals equals green. Of course, that isn't true, so it's going to return false, and so it's going to eliminate this element from the array. And so I've got this running in the browser. So if we just click test filter, we can see if we expand this now, we only have the, uh, the vegetables that are green in the array now, instead of all of the uh, elements that were, that were originally there. And then we have the map method as well. And so this is very similar to the filter method. Uh, if you're looking at these two, um, you know, they almost look identical. Uh, but the difference with a map is rather than filtering out elements of array, uh, a map maps elements of array from one form to another. So it changes the elements in the array rather than removing them. And whatever we return in the, the function that we're passing, uh, the map function, that is what the element will be changed to. So just like the filter function, it's going to uh, loop through all of the elements in our array. And then we run this, uh, this function here against it. Uh, but this time, rather than doing a check like we are here, we're just returning something. And in this case, we're, we're returning a vegetable dot color. So we could just say return vegetable. And then that would just leave everything unchanged. It would just return the original data and the array would look exactly the same. But if we return vegetable.color, it's only going to return the color value. And so what this is going to do is transform this array from an array of objects, array of, an array of vegetable objects, to an array of strings. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I just click the test map uh, button, you can see we just get, uh, you can see we just get this array of string elements now, rather than the objects that were there uh, originally. And so this uh, function in here, it can be, it can do anything you like. This is a pretty simple example, but I could do something like, uh, maybe just something silly, like if uh, vegetable dot uh, title equals uh, Brussels sprout, I'm going to return um, no. Uh, otherwise, I will return, uh, we'll just say we'll return vegetable dot title. So if I save and run this now, uh, we'll hit the test map button again. And you can see we have all of the vegetables still listed there, carrot, spinach, potato, corn, and broccoli. 
uh, but in the case of Brussels sprouts, it's just been replaced with no. And so you could perform really any kind of operation you want on this at all. You could you know, transform all of these to only return the first letter, or you could uh, you could even perform a more complicated uh, you know piece of logic here. You could you know, pa maybe pass this to a service and get some value related to carrot. Yeah, there's a lot of things you could do with this, and it's just really powerful. Both of these are really powerful things to understand. So uh, if you can get your head around filtering and mapping arrays, uh, it'll definitely help a lot in developing uh, your applications. Okay, that's it uh, for this week. As always, if you did like this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also find links to my Twitter and blog where you'll find more tutorials in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week.